Hi, I'm Mayank, and today I'll be talking about our work on function secret sharing for mixed mode and fixed point secret computation. This is joint work with Alet, Nishant, Neve, Devya, Yuval, and Nishant. We will be working in the two PC with preprocessing model, where we have two phases. In the first phase, a dealer distributes correlated randomness to the two main parties, which then use this correlated randomness along with their secret inputs in an online phase to compute a joint function on their inputs. For a majority of this talk, we will assume that we have a trusted dealer, and of the other two parties, we have at most one semi-honest code option. For a more realistic setting, one typically emulates the dealer using either a 3PC protocol, which is quite efficient, or using a 2PC protocol, which can be much more expensive, and I'll come back to this later in the talk. And to handle malicious parties, we can use a speed style Mac approach, which incurs a very small overhead over semi-honest, and all of the ideas that I discuss in the talk today are applicable to these settings as well. What is function secret sharing? Think of a function f with outputs in a finite abelian group. With FSS, you can split the function into two shares, f0 and f1, give one share to each of the parties, who can now locally evaluate the function on inputs x in the domain, such that when their local evaluations are added together, you get back the output of the original function f. These function shares are typically called FSS keys. There are two main properties that one needs from an FSS scheme. The first one is correctness, meaning that you want that when the local evaluations are added together, you get the same output as the original function. The next one is security, where you want that a single FSS key hides the original function f. But it turns out a lot of trivial constructions satisfy these two properties, so we add another property of compactness, where we want that the FSS keys are compact in input and output size. In 2019, Boyle et al. showed how to do uh, two PC with preprocessing using FSS. It all starts with representing your computation as an arithmetic circuit, where a wires can possibly carry elements from different abelian groups. But, ju but just to make things simpler for us, let's just assume that wires carry ring elements, which suffices for the purpose of this talk. And let's focus on a single gate here. So here gate F takes as input X and outputs Y. Their proposal was to move from this evaluation to a different evaluation where we work with masked values. So the input wire is going to carry uh, X plus R where R masks X and similarly for the output wire. And for correctness to hold, we want to change the gate, gates functionality F to a complementary function F hat where F hat is parameterized by these uh, by these shift factors R and S, takes X plus R as input and outputs Y plus S. Just to make it easier for me to refer to both of these evaluations, I'm going to call the first one as the unmasked world and the second one as the masked world. And the key idea here is that since R and S have to be kept secret, one can use FSS to secret share this function F hat and that would still hide R and S. Once we do that for all the gates and all the wires in the circuit, this is what it looks like. And in, in the larger two PC landscape, what happens is that the dealer gives out FSS keys for all the gates in this new mass evaluation in the pre-processing phase. And in the online phase, the parties uh, both evaluate the gate locally using the FSS shares that they got from the dealer. So for example, here, let's look at the gate F. Both the parties input X plus R, but the way FSS is defined, uh, their outputs are going to be additive secret shares of Y plus S, which is not exactly what we wanted because we want uh, output to be Y plus S, but that can easily be handled by both parties just revealing to each other what Y plus S is. And in this way, the computation can keep going on. But this mass world setting might look unfamiliar to you because MPC protocols typically work in this secret shared setting. But what I claim here is that both of these settings are equivalent for this particular evaluation. To understand that, let me add another gate G to the evaluation, which outputs Z plus T. If you look on the left between the green segments, this segment takes as input additive shares of Y plus S and outputs additive shares of Z plus T. So this is what typically secret share to secret share setting of MPC looks like. And on the right, we have the mask to mask setting and both of these are uh, equivalent. It's just a matter of uh, where you place your segment. But a great thing here is that uh, 
since uh, we can cast our, our evaluation as secret share to secret share as well, this now uh, makes it modular uh, to be used with other protocols. So you can use your favorite protocol, which doesn't have an efficient way to evaluate the gate G. You can use FSS uh, as a plugin solution for that, and it will give you a one round solution to evaluate that gate G and leave you with secret shares of the output from which you can carry on with the rest of your protocol. There's two important things to note here. The first one is that the communication per party here is just one ring element per gate, and this communication happens over just a single round. Hopefully by now I've convinced you that you can use FSS to do two PC with pre-processing, but how well does it compare to other approaches? Let's look at that now. To interpret this table, just think of a commonly found non-arithmetic gate, which means uh, something which is more complex than a typical addition or multiplication. In the first row, we have gobble circuits adapted to the trusted dealer model. Online communication in this setting is quite high. You have just two online rounds, but the correlation size, which is the size of the correlated randomness, is also quite high. For GMW or other secret sharing based approaches, you have a low to moderate online communication, which depends on which non-arithmetic gate we're talking about. You have high online rounds, but correlation size is going to be quite low. And finally, with FSS, you have a low online communication and just a single online round, like I mentioned in the previous slide, but the issue is that you have a high correlation size. Uh, and for online metrics, you can see that FSS is a clear winner here, and the biggest bottleneck for FSS is the correlation size. Now let's understand how correlation size affects the efficiency of a pre-processing and online phases. In particular, there are two costs that are directly affected by the correlation size. The first one is the storage cost, and it directly affects the online phase because these correlations have to be stored and consumed in the online phase. The second one is the pre-processing cost where uh, it captures the cost of securely realizing the dealer. This can be done in either of these two settings. The first one is three PC or trusted hardware. In this setting, the cost comes down to how quickly can we generate uh, these correlations locally and stream them to the two main parties. And in the case of two PC, for garbage circuits, it's quite similar to three PC. But for FSS, we now need to distribute the dealer via through two PC protocol. For smaller inputs, for example, up to 16 bits, uh, we have a construction from Dorner Shalat where uh, which is black box in PRG, meaning that we don't need to run PRG inside 2PC, but the issue is that it requires high local PRG evaluations. For the case of larger inputs, we can resort to using 2PC two, two friendly PRGs. But uh, the main idea here is that no matter which setting we are in, reducing the correlation size will yield improvements to all of these. This is the perfect time to motivate our work. To just quickly recap, FSS approach has the benefits of a fast online phase, but it's bottlenecked by high correlated randomness size, which implies a slower pre-processing phase. In this work, we reduce correlation size for FSS approach, which implies a faster pre-processing. To give, to give you an idea of how our improvements look like, think of 16-bit values. And here I'm showing key size or correlation size for gobble circuits prior FSS and our work. In the first row, we have the interval containment gate, which checks whether an input X lies in an interval A to B. For this gate, we achieve 3X improvement over gobble circuits and 7X over prior FSS. For ReLU, the improvements are 2X and 6X. For Sigmoid, which is approximated with a 12-piece spline, the improvements are much more substantial at 15 and 22X. Uh, for bit decomposition, uh, uh, our improvements over prior FSS are 11X, but we are slightly worse than gobble circuits. And finally, for right shift, we achieve a comparable key size to gobble circuits, and we are the, we provide the first uh, efficient construction using FSS for this particular gate. That should give you an idea of how our improvements in key size look like, but let's see how it translates to when we distribute the dealer using 2PC. Here, I'm considering the case for the sigmoid gate. For the communication required for key generation, we are 6x better than gobble circuits, but that comes at a huge cost of 113 times more AES calls that we need. 
At first, this might look too much, but uh, if you consider a wide area network, then we can actually beat garbled circuits in key generation runtime. However, I should point out that uh, the main idea here isn't that we're going to be always better than garbled circuits for pre-processing. In fact, for most cases, we are going to perform worse than garbled circuits for pre-processing. But the main point is that we require lesser storage and, and we have a much faster online phase. And that is the key idea here. Uh, to understand our sources of improvement, let's divide the gates that we encounter into two categories. On the left, we have simple gates like additions and multiplications. And on the right, we have more complex gates, for example, interval containment, ReLU, right shift. And a common theme across all of these gates is that they use comparisons in some form. Our first source of improve improvement comes by uh, improving the key size for FSS for comparisons by 4x. That helps all of these complex, complex gates. And secondly, we uh, provide uh, improved key sizes for common gates, which are significantly better than uh, what was known before. In the next two slides, I'll be going over each of these improvements in a little more detail. What do I mean when I say comparisons for FSS? For that, let's first understand comparison functions. A comparison function is a simple function which is parameterized by alpha and beta. When you give it an input which is at less than alpha, it outputs beta, otherwise it outputs zero. And a DCF or a distributed comparison function is an FSS scheme for these comparison functions. When we consider alpha and beta both being n bits, then prior state-of-the-art construction required 8 n lambda bits of key size, where lambda is the security parameter. And in this work, we reduce that to just 2n times lambda plus n. And for the common case where n is much less than lambda, this amounts to an approximately 4x improvement in key size. And these improvements come uh, by uh, providing a direct construction rather than uh, using FSS for decision trees, uh, as was done in the prior work. For some commonly found gates, we provide further improvements. For IC and ReLU, a prior construction required two DCF keys while we reduced that to a single key. For bit decomposition, prior construction had n minus one keys while we reduced that to n over w DCF keys, where w is a window size parameter. w reduces key size, but it increases compute. So uh, the exact choice of w depends a lot on your application. And finally, for splines with m pieces and d degree, Prior construction required two MDCF keys while we reduce that to a single key and a small amount of correlated randomness. And a common theme across all of these numbers is that for most of these gates, we require just a single DCF key, no matter how many comparisons actually happen in the gate. Uh, these improvements come from a crucial insight. Let's understand that. Uh, in the unmasked world, prior construction uh, assumed that the intervals uh, inside the gates are secret. For example, for IC, they assumed that the interval boundaries A and B were secret, but it turns out that that's an overkill for most applications. And we relax that assumption in this, in this work by assuming that the interval boundaries are public. This leakage is actually okay because the function that is to be computed is typically known to both the parties. And if you're not convinced, then let me give you an example of neural networks. Uh, in a neural network with ReLU activations, a ReLU function has uh, public intervals because everyone knows that you're checking x, which is uh, in the positive range or not. And the intervals there are public, so this leakage is actually okay for most of the applications. In the rest of the talk, I'll be focusing on the IC gate, where I will assume that the boundaries A and B are public. And this is what it looks like in the unmasked setting. But since we will be working in the mask setting, the IC gate is going to look a little different. We will be checking whether X plus R lies from A hat to B hat, where A hat and B hat are A plus R and B plus R respectively. And we will be blinding the output with a plus S, but uh, let's ignore plus S for now because that can easily be handled by the dealer giving out uh, additive shares of S in the pre-processing phase along with the other correlated randomness. And since uh, A hat and B hat both, have, both are now tainted with R, they'll now be secret values. First, I'll be showing you the IC construction from prior work and then how we improve that construction to achieve just a single key. 
Let's start the technical part of this talk by taking a quick look at the IC construction from prior work. I'll be showing you this construction pictorially. Uh, here this long block show is a representation of the ring. On the left we have 0, on the right we have n-1. So this is a ring of n elements and anything that goes beyond n-1 wraps around and comes on to the left side. On top of this ring I'll show you different points in the ring and on the bottom uh, what all uh, output values do we want for those points. For example here for the IC gate we want uh, output to be 1 for all values from A to B and 0 everywhere else. Let's put this on the right side for a moment. This is how the unmasked world looks like but since we will be working in the masked world let's take a look at that. We will have two cases here. In the first case uh, our shift factor R was small enough that it doesn't cause uh, the green region to wrap around but it just shifts it to the right a little bit. Uh, the idea in the prior construction was to use two DCF keys. The first one is a DCF key for A hat. What I mean by that is that this key is going to output minus one for all inputs which are less than A hat and zero everywhere else. And a second key which is a DCF for B hat which outputs a one on everything less than B hat and zero elsewhere. Their proposal was to add the outputs of these two DCFs together and that gives you precisely what you wanted. It gives you one in the green region and zero everywhere else. So this takes care of the first case. Now let's take a look at the second case. In the second case, the shift factor R was large enough that it causes uh, the green region to partly wrap around. So the green region is now split into two parts, one on the right and one on the left. And we still want one in the green region and zero everywhere else. Let's follow the exact same strategy and see what happens. So we have a DCF for A hat, DCF for B hat, we add them together, we get something. But this time it doesn't look exactly the same as what we wanted. But if you look closely here, you'll see that what we are getting versus what we want are offset by an additive factor of plus one. So we can actually look at both of these cases slightly differently. We can think that the first case requires a correction of zero and the second case requires a correction of one. And since the dealer will know which of the two cases we are in because the dealer knows R as well as A and B, so the dealer can actually give us corrections of zero or one depending on which case we're going to be in and that uh, allows us to evaluate the IC gate. This is the construction from prior work. Our plan for improving the IC construction from prior work is going to be the following. The prior construction required two keys, one for com computing x less than a hat and one for computing x less than b hat. What we are going to do here is that we are going to move to the unmasked world for just a second. We are going to pick an arbitrary c which is greater than both a and b. And then we are going to come back to the masked world, give a key for x less than c hat and we will reduce the keys for a hat and b hat to this single special key. And if we can achieve that, then we will be able to reduce the keys for IC from two keys to just a single key. Obviously, this cannot happen uh, without giving some extra terms, so there will be some more terms needed. But the good thing here is that those terms are pretty easy to compute and don't need FSS keys for themselves. Let's look at uh, our final construction now. Uh, on the right here, I have the unmasked world, where I've chosen an arbitrary C which is greater than A. Let's see in what things look like in the masked world. We again will have two cases. In the first case, the R is small enough that it doesn't cause either of A hat or B hat to wrap around. So both of them shift to the right a little bit. And I'm going to divide this into four regions. First region would be, would be everything which is less than A hat. Fourth region would be everything which is greater than C hat. And everything in the middle will be divided into two regions partitioned at this special point n minus 1 minus c minus a. The relevance of this point will be clear in just a moment. And this is actually what we want. We want DCF for a hat but we will not be given access to this key and we will somehow need to get the same map using the key for c hat. Our idea to achieve this is to shift everything right by c minus a. If you do that a hat jumps on to the place where c hat used to be and that special point is now the rightmost point in the ring. Let's see what DCF for C hat uh, gives us here. It gives us one uh, in the regions 1, 3 and 4 but uh, we actually wanted one in just the first region. 
so, uh, so in particular regions three and four are the problematic regions here where we are getting something else than what we want but a crucial observation here is that these two are the only regions that wrap around when everything is shifted to the right by c minus a so if we could penalize everything that wraps around when c minus a is added and add that to our dcf evaluation for c hat we will get the exact same map as the dcf for a hat and this solves the first case and the major insight here which lets uh, this transformation work so nicely is that this overflow is local for both the parties to find. Both the parties know C, A, and X plus R. So they know uh, which of the elements are going to wrap around when C minus A is added to X plus R. Let's take a look at the second case. In the second case, uh, R is uh, big enough that it causes C hat to wrap around, but not A hat. We will again divide it into four regions and let's follow the exact same strategy. So this is the map that we are looking for. We shift everything to the right by C minus A. And this is the map for DCF for C hat here. Uh, the regions three and four uh, wrap, wrap around, so we are going to penalize them. And when we do that and add that to our DCF evaluation for C hat, uh, this is what we get. This is not uh, exactly the same as DCF for A hat, but if you look closely, this is offset by that by just an additive plus one. So we can again ask the dealer to give us corrections of zero or one, whether we are in case zero, or whether we are in case one or case two. And this is our entire construction. We have a lot more in the paper. For example, we show how to do a two round fixed point multiplication and prove a barrier uh, for doing that in a single round with symmetric key cryptography. We show, uh, we provide a construction for distributed key generation for DCFs, which is quite similar to the dornier shalot construction for DPFs. And we show how to handle malicious evaluators. If you are interested in any of that, I encourage you to take a look at our paper. Let's give ourselves a quick pat on the back for making this far in the talk. The key takeaways that I want you to remember are that whenever you have multiple comparisons in a gate, we can ask the dealer to just give us a single key and some ring elements and everything else can be taken care of by the two parties in the online phase, no matter how many comparisons there are in the gate. And when we couple that with our improved DCF key size, we achieve much smaller key size for commonly found FSS gates, which implies a faster pre-processing, which was the biggest bottleneck for the FSS approach. A concurrent work Ariane also proposes some optimizations for FSS catered for, towards training and inference in neural networks. If you're interested in that, I encourage you to take a look at their paper. Thanks a lot for tuning in for the talk. Have a nice day.